All right, fellas. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children that happen to be of all ages. We're going to get ready for the most exciting part of every stream, and that is a Chris Chan, a comprehensive history part 38. Let's do it. I said, let's do it. There we go. What made him this way? I don't know. What is the attraction? So I wonder, are we going to get to the point where like he starts saying what made her this way? When Chris starts identifying? Just saying. What keeps us fascinated? The answer is probably not. This is the story of Chris Chan. On July 12, 2012, the online newspaper, Houston Press, published an article focusing on punk musician Rex Neighbors III's efforts in raising money for the video game-related charity, Extra Life. During the interview, he briefly mentioned that he had made an album called Trollstas Paradise, which consisted of cover versions of songs that Christian had covered and lyrically modified on his Christian and the Hedgehog Boys albums. Wait, what? I'm- I'm- Life. Wait. During the interview, he briefly mentioned that he had made an album called Trollstas Paradise, Okay. Which consisted of cover versions of songs that Christian had covered and lyrically modified on his Christian and the Hedgehog Boys albums. Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, so this... Okay. Neighbors revealed that he donated all the proceeds of the album to autism-related charities, since he considered uh -oh. Chris as, quote-unquote, blackface for autism. What? Blackface for... Wait. Hold on. Dude. I made off... It, I made it to autism, um, because this dude is basically blackface for autism. How is he blackface for autism? What? of the album to autism-related charities, since he considered Chris as, quote-unquote, blackface for autism. On July 20th, Chris wrote a Facebook post concerning his trial 10 days prior. He clarified that he had not yet been assigned any community service, and also reflected on his lawyer, Rob Bell's, comments about him. When how do you think Chris would do in community service, though? All jokes aside, like, how do you think that would work out? Chris Chan walking around trying to pick up garbage and shit? I just don't see it going particularly well, honestly. It would be a service to the community, to not have him do community service. It's probably just harass everybody else that's there. When Rob introduced me to the judge as an adult high-functioning child, I did make a silent comment between me and my mother in response. That statement was an oxymoron. It isn't valid. I mean, I am an adult. Do not call me a child. The statement should have been high-functioning autistic adult, individual, or person. And anyway, I still feel like I have lost because Snyder is getting paid indirectly from me and my mother through our insurance. He won! That goddamn bribing what is it? What is comprehensive CC episode? What does that mean? Bastard. I wish him dead from either a heart attack or a gunshot murder. On that same day, he let his Facebook friends know that he was keeping himself busy by building four different Lego buildings and decided. Oh, the con you're saying that I'm in the latest episode of the comprehensive Chris Chan guide. What do you mean? I'm in the episode. What? What? That he would use pieces from those sets to make a grand house for his future self and his sweetheart portrayed by the Lego character Olivia. He confessed that he had been manipulated into destroying his Lego-made city of Quakeville by Jackie, hinting that their relationship by this point was over, and he knew that she had been a troll all along. Five days later, he posted a photo of his Lego self and Olivia next to their comp- Wait, is that real? He knew the whole time? I mean, I wouldn't doubt it. If that's true and he knew the whole time, then why was he doing it? Maybe he thought he was doing a long game troll, or maybe he was just like, "I want the I want the attention so bad, I'll 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 do with somebody or pretend to be with somebody that doesn't actually want to be with me." That's crazy. Completed dream house, adorned by some custom stickers and accompanied by customized pieces representing Sonichu and Rose Chu. Later that day, he entered his two new beagle pups, Clover and Snoopy, in a dog days of summer photo contest held by the radio station Z ninety five point one. His entry was soon discovered by trolls who left him pleasant at surface level comments about the dogs. On the final day of July, Chris lamented that the Christian page on Encyclopedia Dramatica was still up. He expressed regret about putting Sonichu on the internet and making all the videos on YouTube which he was coerced into filming and that they did not reflect who he truly was. Possibly sometime in early August, Chris created a paid profile on the dating site eHarmony. On August 17th... Bro, why would you need to do that? Like back then, OkCupid and everything were free. Now it's like everything's paid, but like you could have totally used that, bro. That's what I did. <laughs> he shared the existence of his profile on Facebook, asking you for the reasons me, why he had failed to speak with any women so far. On the 27th, he further explained why he was feeling low. I'm okay, just faring well. My mom, dogs, and I all have our good health still. 
I do not want to sound like a cry in the bucket by repeating myself with how I feel emotionally. I am still feeling low. I am unable to get out of the house, aside from bringing home food and running errands. I have my responsibilities. I am never going to run away or deny it. But the multiple stress inputs, past and present, seriously get to me emotionally and mentally. And no woman is contacting or replying to me and my paid membership. That makes sense. eHarmony, um is paid like the commercials yeah you probably saw it on tv you know what you could if you saw like the the farmers dating thing that might have been better for him you ever see those or black people meets you ever see those commercials very good i went on there once they kicked me off because i wasn't black enough which i feel like is racist you know but you know <laughs> on eHarmony constant boredom and loneliness is daily to me and all i can do is wait with low faith in my future I wish I could travel back to 1999 and make me and my family stay in Midlothian to change my future for the better. How is this my life? Sigh. Whatever happened to the dating arc with the fucking prostitute? Like, whatever happened to that? Yeah, his dad passed away like last episode, I think. Episode before that, maybe? Um, whatever happened to the... Whatever happened to the, the, the prostitute? He was paying 150 bucks to. The battery hurt, Chris. Come on. On September 5th, Chris notified his friends that he got a message from a woman on eHarmony. No. Though after checking her profile, he suspected her to be a troll since her interests lined up too closely with his. Anna McLaren left her <laughs> comment. <laughs> she likes Twilight Sparkle because she's outgoing and in your face. Yeah. She doesn't quite line up as a brony. Not quite. She's almost passable as like a, like a brony, but she has a job, so expected her to be a troll since her interests lined up too closely with his. I'm very perceptive of you, Chris. Anna McLaren left a comment, agreeing that it was clearly a troll. Kim Wilson interjected, writing that she felt like it was just a normal person. Anna called Kim a troll, who then proceeded to defend her words of encouragement for Christian. Could you imagine if it really was a real person and he just passed on that person? Anna and Kim then had a small bout via the comments over being true friends with Christian. In the end, no firm resolve was established between them. Three days later, he said that he recently felt increasingly more retarded, brought on by stress in his life. Chris considered including his slowness of thought in his... I think we've all been there, guys. <laughs> the Harmony profile. On September 11th, he reflected that it had been over a year since his father Bob had passed away. His loss had resulted... Interesting time to reflect. Ni on 9-11? <laughs> hey, guys. It seems like an interesting place to, to reflect. It's always because it's, it, it didn't happen on 9-11, I don't think, right? Because he says over a year. So what's weird to me is like, and people must have been like, oh man, you know, rest in peace to the people who, who passed in 9-11. Chris is like, yeah, I'm feeling emotional. I miss my dad. You know what I mean? That's why it's like a little weird. Resulted in increasing stress for Chris, which manifested itself in allegedly unnatural sounding belches and mental griefs. He further highlighted that no women replied. Bro, I think that's a real thing. Like, he's burping, like, having stress burps and shit. Like, yeah, that's kind of a real thing. Like, an upset stomach. Damn. ...to his messages on eHarmony, angrily asking if he looked too ugly. What? I'm, like, reading this. Yep, 11 after 11, quad towers for twin towers. But what happened? That day is not funny. The day... What the fuck are you talking about? That day at the time, I was out shopping with my mom. We were at Dollar Tree, and I brought up a pack of Team Rocket Pokemon cards. A dark Arbok was the rare card of the pack. <laughs> okay. I guess that's where he was on 9-11. I remember I got pulled out of school. I just remember a very vivid picture of my stoop. As I heard the news. Interesting. In closing, since it was the 11-year anniversary since the felling of the World Trade Center Twin Towers, Chris reminisced that on that day, he was out shopping with his mother and bought himself a pack of Pokemon cards. On the 23rd, he stated on Facebook that he had tried messaging the Wallflower, but got no response. Throughout- I kinda, That person kinda looks like the person who bought- oh, who, who did 9-11. The drawing, I'm just saying. October, Christian continued what to write fuck? Facebook posts expressing his profound sadness and loneliness brought about by numerous factors, such as his father's death, bullying from trolls, and a seemingly futile search for a sweetheart. On October 8th, he sent an email to Kim Wilson, writing about how the Chandlers were considering bringing their two beagles to a professional dog trainer with whom Barbara had flirted, as the dogs were in need of proper training. In addition, he told her that he put his mind at ease by building Lego structures, playing video- Are you saying that Barbara was trying to get that pup pussy? <laughs> ...video games, and meeting once a week with his special counselor, Rocky Shoemaker. He also feared that his Facebook account had been hacked into, so he promptly changed his password. On November 2nd, Chris wrote that his foray into dating via eHarmony had not worked out as he had intended. He further reflected that he was not suited for online socialization, and that supposed damage and missing links in his brain prevented him from excelling in public as well. 
Five days later, he posted a photo of his custom-made Lego watch, which was supposed to represent himself, and added several punsome statements about the watch. My only issue with the watch is that um, it very clearly wouldn't work, I don't think. It was like a sundial. But here's my thing. That's like a silly thing for you to make. But I wonder, Chris is in his car in a parking lot, it looks like. So are what we're saying here is that Chris decided to make this watch, and he was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wear this in public. Maybe people will think it's cool. And I feel like somebody should have got, you know, tried to guide him in the right way. I'm eating Subway. I'm almost done. On the 26th, he wrote on Facebook that he was feeling down again, missing his father. He also expressed his hatred for the entire male population for taking all the women and leaving him with none to choose from. Three days later, he revealed himself through a captioned photograph of himself that he was a true American and also a brony. When Kim asked Chris about what a brony was, he told her- I don't think you could do that. I don't think you could be a true American and a brony. Do you think that you can call yourself a true American and a brony at the same time? This is a deep philosophical conversation I'm about to have with my wife. I don't think that bronies would be like Okay. But I think that they still have to be. All right, so she said she doesn't think that like they would be like your traditional American like fuck yes, but they would do they would stand with the forefathers. Why? Because they're incel virgins. They have like a concern. Yeah, yeah, like forcing women to fuck them because they wouldn't want to do it. <laughs> she says the only way is different is that she, uh, uh, I can. They, I don't know if you can hear, it, but she says something about uh, horses. The, the, the bronies like horses that are basically represent like four year old girls, maybe like eight year old, ten year olds. Yeah. yeah. You know, not for nothing. I remember watching a documentary. I say this every once in a while, and it talked about people with autism, and a lot of them loved My Little Pony. I didn't know it, so I took an autism test, and they told me I had autism. The thing is, is I don't like My Little Pony. But listen, maybe about a month ago. Okay, I was on YouTube looking for something to watch and I and, and a My Little Pony video did come up it was the lore of My Little Pony so I watched it part of it not all of it I only reason I didn't finish is because I forgot about it but I watched like the first three seasons worth of lore and I was like wow interesting I could see why people liked it and so what I did is I I went and I st I stabbed myself and I, I just I had to condition myself to never watch that because I don't want to turn into a brony sure that it was a male fan of the cartoon series My Little Pony on December 11th, Chris also came out as a gamer publicly on Facebook. Whoa! Sorry for yelling. The reason that's so impactful is because the gamers are the most oppressed class. The following day, he informed his friends that he had recently gotten a new gaming device, the Nintendo Wii U, and subsequently donated his old console, Whoa. the Wii, to his church. That's nice. Um, I got the Wii U. It was weird. He then requested that if any of his friends also get a Wii U, they should send him a friend request to his username in Nintendo's online social space. I like how his, his little avatar has like an eyeshadow on. Meverse. He scoffed at the trolls for not discovering his account sooner. On December 20th, as a Christmas present. Bro. Oh, did you hear that? Oh, I'm not even fucking with you this time. He scoffed at the trolls for not discovering his account sooner. Bro. Okay. The reason why that really hits me is because like Chris is used to constant... Even if it's negative attention, constant attention from the trolls. And now, probably due to his father passing and the fact that they're like seeing him post on Facebook about how upset he is, they're disengaging with him troll wise. On top of the fact that he'd be able to identify trolls on, on eHarmony. So, like, now he's losing attention from the trolls that used to give him all his attention. And he's like desperate for that, like, that really parasocial, toxic relationship. On December 20th, as a Christmas present, he offered a free download of the recording of his father Bob Chandler's guest appearance on WTJU Radio in 1990, plus an additional three hours of jazz music. A few days after Christmas, Chris lamented again that he felt very lonely, and almost wished that the world indeed ended, referring to the popular conspiracy theory of the time that the end of the world had been prophesied to come on December 21st, 2012. On the final day of the year, he commented that his New Year's resolutions for years have been to find a woman to make into a sweetheart. Placing his New York resolutions. But sadly, that wish had yet to be realized. On January 1st, 2013, Christian left a comment directed at his friends. 
Stupid comment. If there is anyone in my friends list who knows any slender woman in Charlottesville, Virginia, who can introduce me to other women in Charlottesville, Virginia, of which are very likely to be single, smoke-free, slender, honest and true, I would be eternally grateful. Yep. The next day, he wrote... Honestly, Chris, you have to stop having standards if you want to get some pussy. Slender and smoke-free? Christopher. It's never gonna happen. ...again that he felt depressed and that his life was like a nightmare. He posted two photos of a Lego figure representing himself. First, standing upright, and then lying face down. He soon made the Lego figure his new Facebook profile photo. Wow. On that same day, he Incredible. posted the photo of him accepting his graduation certificate at Manchester High School in 2000, and expressed his regret for not shaking anyone's hand and running off stage crying. He stated that his mother had told him that his actions brought shame upon their family. Wow. On January... That makes sense as to why he like looks at that as a, as a negative point in his life all the time. 10th, in an email to one of his gal pals, he revealed that pranksters sometimes threw eggs at the Chandler's house and their cars. Wow. He also told her that he felt great... Free eggs? So <laughs> shit. <laughs> difficulty in opening up to new people because he believed that anyone he may meet in real life, even police officers, might turn out to be trolls in disguise. Bro, I told you, this dude has fucking PTSD. After sympathizing with him, she let him know that she would be attending the gaming convention, Maticon, in nearby Harrisonburg, Virginia, and asked if Chris would be interested in coming. <laughs> Look at these DDR nerds. They got like fucking box fans in front of them because they sweat so much. Take off the jacket you have wrapped around your ass, loser. Along. After several discussions with his mother, Chris stated that he was allowed to go to the convention for one day. However, in order to limit the number of people there who might recognize him, he plans to wear a costume fashioned like the one seen in the 1997 film, Eyes Wide Shut. Okay. At the end of the month, at the suggestion of good, a, good idea. a fellow churchgoer, Christian created a profile on the online dating site, Match.com. When he was setting up his account, he found that someone else had used his email address to create an obscene profile, oh which he quickly wiped God. clean and personalized, and set his username as Quickville Guardian. On February 4th, why? Why would you do that? Okay, whatever. Chris posted a recently discovered photograph featuring Daniel Mims from The Game Place, the person who helped spread Chris's 2007 photo on the internet. He asked if anyone knew of his current whereabouts, so he could either send him or hand him a letter expressing how strongly he felt against him and his friend, Lucas. A couple of days later, he posted about his enjoyment of the 2012 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles animated series and attached a photo of his Lego TMNT figures. Those look really cool, actually. Revealing that he had drawn breasts onto the female turtle. Uh, why would you do that, Chris? Why do you gotta draw titties on the fucking female turtle? You gotta ruin it. I never, I saw a little bit of the movie about the girl turtle and I turned it off immediately. It was an old movie, it was weird. Venus de Milo. Yeah, it's her titties. <laughs> Not long after, Kushi made a Facebook post shared only with Kim Wilson, showing that he decided to shave off his eyebrows and wow. was evidently not pleased with the result. Bro, dude, can we just talk about... Have you ever seen the girls on TikTok who shave their eyebrows off? Those fucking psychopaths? Chris Chan invented that. Can we we see a trend? Chris Chan is the creator of everything. The problem is, is that Chris Chan was too advanced for, like, the time. Like, think about it. He's too ahead of the time, and people rejected it instantly. But, like, realistically speaking, like... Everything he's done, everything that Chris has ever done has turned into a norm. Let's play videos, um, having uh, shaving your eyebrows, um, having autism, all these things now. Because think about it. How many people now are identifying as having autism on, on TikTok when they have no diagnosis? It's crazy. The original Tom boy, girl, Tom girl, Thomas girl. Thomas girlfriend. After receiving some suggestions from her, he decided to start using a smudge-proof eyebrow pencil and custom shape his eyebrows. Dude, he create. Dude, listen, listen here. Don't don't take this the wrong way. He that's that's a, a lot of Hispanic girls use that style. They they shave their eyebrows off and then they draw them back on. Listen, I'm not criticizing. It looks great, but you you're appropriating that from Chris Chan. He was the original creator. In fact, if Chris wasn't so racist, he probably... I mean, look, he's, look how influential he is in the, the, the Latina community. God, this joke's kill me. You could have dated him. You could have you gotta, you gotta got with a hot Latino honey. Latinx. On Valentine's Day, Chris what? asked her if she knew of any record dealers or collectors in the area because he and Barbara were intending to sell Bob's extensive record collection to pay off their debts. On February 25th, a day after his 30... <coughs> You're killing me. You're right. Christian Ricardo Wesson Chandler. Oh my God, bro. The signs were there the whole time. Holy shit. 
dude, I'm fucking mind blown. It all makes sense. Holy shit, dude. Oh my god. Dude, I'm fucking I'm I'm oh my god. Dude, you guys don't understand. This makes so much sense. Chris is the second coming. You're right. He's talking about a, a, a fantasy world where everything you draw comes to real life. That's heaven. That's heaven. And you guys are like, you guys miss. This is what happens. This is what the original saying was. Everything you're drawing is coming to real life. Back then, their drawings were terrible. They look like shit. Now they're looking real. Like Sonic Jew. Fucking. Is this real life? You know, that's the first thing I thought. First birthday. Christian wrote an extensive complaint on Facebook, focusing on a short YouTube video featuring the voice actress, Tara Strong, playing the part of her Twilight Sparkle character from the series, My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, performing a parodic troll-related rap. While I do respect her voice acting in MLP, FIM, and she does a good job- What is FIL? Oh, friendship is magic, gotcha. ...but portraying Twilight. I feel distraught in hearing her voice not only in promoting trolling, but linking Twilight with the act, even as to dare mark the now alicorn a mascot for trolling. As a lot of people are aware of me, I've been a grave victim of trolling for over five long years. I've been emotionally and mentally scarred by the troll's deceptions, lies, blackmail, slander of my once good name, and so forth. Oh. Now I'm like a black sheep of the world for the wrongest of reasons, mm. and people are afraid and misunderstand worse of me and yeah. of who I am and I was. So I address you, Miss Tara Strong. Yeah. Did you have any knowledge or acknowledgement of what trolling was and is, and how these horrible people have and continue to mentally and emotionally Terrible. damage innocent people Terrible. with their twisted, sick, demented, and evil ways alongside Anonymous and 4chan behind the veils of the internet? Uh, he's not actually wrong with the whole 4chan thing. Nowadays, I don't know if 4chan's as crazy now. I think they've moved on to a different place. 4chan's mostly just for porn. And beheading videos. How do you stand in the name of protecting innocent people from being emotionally and mentally damaged from such bullying? And what were you thinking at the time when you recorded your voice for Black Griffin's meme, which obviously depicted and promoted trolling? If you had absolutely no regard to the consequences of the people, including myself, who were, are, and have been the tragic victims of the bullying trolls, then I see a lot of disappointed Twilight Sparkle fans and bronies ready to boo at you. Please prove my theory wrong and make a statement directly from your person and in the good name of Twilight Sparkle, Bubbles, and all of the characters you've given your voice to. One of his readers decided to forward his message to Tara Strong's own Facebook account. She true. addressed Chris's post the next day. What? She, why is Chris so influential despite only getting six shares? I don't think I've seen anyone put an ugly spin on something this outrageously for their own attention. What? Anyone who follows me knows that I'm on a huge anti-bullying platform and even wrote and produced a song about it. All my twolling, as we on Twitter call it, is completely adorable and makes people smile. Christian's article makes me angry and disappointed. Hope I never meet the guy. Whoa! The next day, Chris defended his comments on Facebook. Holy moly! That's terrible. Because, like, yeah, Chris is being a little dickhead. But if you think about his background, he associates all trolling with, like, his entire life that has been ruined by trolling, you know? Book, calling out trolling as bullying and denouncing Strong's involvement with the short. In early March. If you think about it, the only reason why it looks terrible. If you think about it, the only reason that people didn't really agree with Chris is because he has autism and you guys are all ableist. Christian dyed his hair back to brown after admitting to Kim that his blonde hair did not bring him as much attention as he would have liked. Wow. On Saturday, March 9th. Wait, he dyed it brown? To Kim that In early March, Christian dyed his hair back to brown. After he dyed his hair back to brown? Is that good to do that? To constantly dye your hair back and forth? It's not good. I knew that. I had to ask a woman because dyeing your hair is weird, but, you know. After admitting to Kim that his blonde hair did not bring him as much attention as he would have liked. On Saturday, March 9th, he attended Medicon held at James Madison University, where he met up with Kim and also two of her female friends. I mean, honestly, if Chris just started making videos again, he'd probably get the attention that he wants, but... He showed interest in one of them, but Kim told him that she already had a boyfriend. Damn. After he got back home, Boyfriend he wrote girl, that it was his most enjoyable day in a very long time. But his good mood was soured when he found out from the quickie forums that one of his most suggestive pictures that was leaked to Jackie was featured on the MTV show, Philosophy. Oh my god, dude. Oh, this is so fucked up. Jamie? Yes? Who do you date? Who do you room with? Who do you call the cops on? Okay, um, room with bacon guy, because I love bacon and I can steal his. <laughs> Definitely put that guy in jail because that's a really ugly couch in the background. Oh, that was the reason. Oh, Chris no. left an angry comment on the show's Facebook page. From the one woman's words, Jamie Lee, I don't know what is worse, that she would not date me or that she would put me in jail over a freaking couch. 
My once good name. <laughs> it's a fucking joke, but damn. Was actually jailed because of the setups. Those anonymous, lulzy, shit-faced trolls. At least I was more clean, sexy, and gung-ho than either of the ugly, grimy freak shows I was compared with. Not for nothing, the bacon guy was kind of hot. I'm just saying. If I did not have a very good day beforehand today, I would seriously be calling my attorney on your damn show's ass. On March 18th, Chris wrote on Facebook that he felt it spooky and creepy that other autistic males he saw looked just like him. I'm fucking, I can't with this shit. How do I, how do I, how do I, how do we experience what we just experienced? He's upset that every autistic male looks, or every male with autism looks just like him. Incredible. Ten days later, he complained at the increased talk about legalizing gay marriage on the news at the time. I mean, of course, what, who wouldn't? No personal offense, and I am for lesbians being together and their marriage. But I'm really offended with the damn homosexual males altogether. So I am like 50-50 on the current topic in the newspapers. I'm for lesbians getting together and getting married? <laughs> but I am 100% sick, tired, and disgusted of having to read at least the headlines in the post. Talk about something else already. Anna left a comment. It isn't right for you to be okay with lesbians and not be okay with gays. True. Chris then defended his stance. Like it is not right for me to prefer women over men for attraction and companionship, or a number of women not liking women over men for their catty attitudes. All right, all right, all right. let's actually have a, sl a slightly nuanced conversation here. Everybody has their prejudices. You're allowed to think that le lesbians are hot and gay men are not. And you can even think they're gross. You shouldn't, but you can. However, we need to understand that from like a legal perspective, they're the fucking same thing, and you can't advocate against their existence. You know what I mean? Like You could be uncomfortable with something, but you don't have to advocate against their, their existence. Kim also contributed to the discourse. Huh, that's weird. You know, the gay women are taking potential girlfriends away from you, and the gay men are keeping other men from taking potential girlfriends from you. So, you've got it backwards. True! Anyway, you know, some people might be against autistic rights, you know? What if people are offended by you and say you shouldn't have a girlfriend? Chris then replied. Well, I do not like the majority of the male population regardless. The straight ones take the women away. The damn homo males not only tried to push their gross ways onto me, but have emotionally and mentally devastated me in their shit troll slash cyberbully ways. Oh and they have mislabeled me and stunned you as such. Damned males piss me the hell off. Got him. Kim closed the argument with one more comment. Huh? But that doesn't have anything to do with the original post. But yeah, nah. They're not actually trying to push their sexuality on you. They just know that you react to it and took advantage of that. They're almost certainly True. not gay, and probably many of them aren't even men. You really got to cut down on the sexism. I don't know if I agree with that. Most of the trolls, I think, are men. Or most, like, dumb internet nerds. I'm not saying all of them are. I just think I would say most of them probably are, were boys, men, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Chris, women find it unattractive. Whoa! Got him! On the final day of March, a letter written by Chris concerning his displeasure with his church was leaked on the quickie forums. Okay. He originally had sent it to his counselor, Rocky Shoemaker, who was instructed to print it out and spread it around amongst the parishioners. Amongst the us. The exact date at which it was originally written is uncertain. Okay. I feel that ever since Reverend Elizabeth Foss left our church, it has greatly gone downhill for me. Ed Winkler banned me from the church for a month. He has banned me from speaking my peace during the sharing of joys and concerns, and from that, I felt unnecessarily silenced. I also feel my meetings with Rocky no longer have much effect on me or my life. My life continues to be a disappointing standstill of sadness, loneliness, and great stress. Only the people way older than me ever do so much as greet me, and I have very little to share in common with any of them. Nobody even close to my age, or even in their twenties, gives me me much to do, or include me in their conversation. Aside from that, I am hated by a number of people for reasons beyond my full understanding, because I always try to be a good and nice person for a long time, and in public, I am constantly overlooked, ignored, or ostracized by everybody. Even speaking out gets me absolutely no attention. I continue to be paranoid of most everyone. Well, that's probably what's making people not really want to fuck around with you, Chris, so you're speaking out, you know? One, because of them likely being among the internet trolls that still continue to haunt and taunt me. I am still long desperate for a woman to be my sweetheart. I am tired of being single, dang it. I continue to serve my family the best I can, and I continue to feel sad, depressed, and lonely. My heart feels numb, and I am forced to keep a great emotional distance from everybody outside my house and home. I am an autistic mental and emotional mess, and there is very little I can do to help myself beyond my knowledge. And God sees fit for some hate-filled reason to continue to curse me as a jinx. And, so, the church is not helping me much in- Give me two seconds, guys. my life mentally or emotionally at all the game so i will not be coming back for a long time on april 4th chris made a post about wanting nothing to do with michael snyder or the game place 
in a private post made public. Oh, wow. I mean, how many times have we heard that? I mean, <laughs> do you think that Crystal thinks of himself as a nice teenage boy at this point? You know, that's a really interesting question because I think a lot of people who get older, and myself included, struggle with the concept of it. And it takes like these really weird situations where I'm like, oh shit, I'm old. And it constantly happens to you as you get older where you're like, oh fuck, I'm old. Oh fuck, I'm old. It happens like all the time. And I, I feel like, yeah, Chris is probably in like a a situation that's kind of similar to that but it's probably not as like super self-aware so like yeah he might still kind of consider himself uh, uh you know uh, like some kind of like a teenage boy or something weird in that capacity um because it'll take a lot of him to be like oh wait a minute like i'm really i'm getting like old as fuck bro you know it's gonna take a lot for him to realize that only to his friends. He further elaborated on his hatred for the place and singled out Megan Schroeder as the prime queen of the trolls for conscripting yeah. Snyder, Mims, and everyone else at the game and hobby store against- Megan Schroeder gets all this shit for doing nothing wrong, man. Megan is innocent, Christopher. You need to stop, okay? She didn't do it. I don't even think that she knows who you are. She, she's just really creeped out by you, by your existence, you know? Tim. He wished to exact revenge on her and have her jailed and beaten up for allegedly being a vile, wicked, oh traitorous bitch. Jesus Christ! On April 20th, Christian posted two photos of himself holding up paper signs. One stated, I'm my own free bitch! And the other read, Haters to the left! With an arrow pointing at Chris's left, but the viewer's right, which unintentionally ended up pointing at Chris. Anna fixed- <laughs> Oh my god. This error and posted an altered version of the photo in the comments. He allegedly made these pictures for a girl who he was introduced to by Kim Wilson. Two days later, he shared a photo of his cat Lucy sitting on his belly, which he called his shrinking mound. Ew. On May 15th, what the Chris fuck? went to Facebook to express his disgust for an upcoming spin-off movie of the cartoon series My Little Pony called okay. Equestria Girls, in which the main pony characters are reimagined as humans. Chris claimed that this What's wrong with that? I don't movie would invite pedophiles into the fan base, which according to him was already polluted with so-called horse enthusiasts. On that same day, he reported that his. <laughs> well, listen, Chris is not wrong. First of all, Chris created, um, like, he. Uh, that's incredible. Like, he must have created anti furry people as well. He's not wrong, dude. You think that they. You, you don't think that people that want to fuck horses that are in here? They're probably like, oh, yeah, I want to fuck a horse. And then they're looking at this shit. Those nasty fucking animals. You know, it's true, dude. Real shit. iPod had fallen out of his pouch, and while still functional, its screen was cracked. Four days later, he displayed his new invention, which allowed him to store a couple of Apple devices neatly in one place. Wow. Necessity is the mother of invention. What does that mean? Like, it's just, what? Okay. What does that even mean, though? It allows you to store a bunch of Apple devices in the right place? Um, like, just store, like, the floor? I mean, can we do that anywhere? Invention. I'm glad I crafted the idea for my idea bookcase. Photos taken with new iPod Touch 5th Gen, out of duct tape. The front and back covers are lined with bubble wrap. The inner spine loop can hold as thick as a charging cable, or most wow. pens. There are holes for the cameras to see through very well, and the corner holders are very successful in holding most iOS pod slash phone devices. And there's Ooh. also the Velcro clasp. iPhone, 8 gig for calls, business, and internet. iPod, 32 gig for entertainment with videos, music, and all. I keep it safe with the lanyard strap and tucked in my bosom. Bosom. On May 23rd, oh. Christian made his first appearance under the username Painting a Tree on the Quickie forums in a thread about possible server migration. Even though the conversation itself had since migrated onto another site and no longer available in its original layout, the content remains the same. In his short comment, he wished for the Quickie forums. <laughs> Christian invented iPhone cases? Hell yeah, brother. It's true. See? We're finding out new stuff that he's invented every day. User Marvin, who was also the man in the pickle suit during Marvin. Chris's date with Emily and oh one of the God. leading members of the private villa of Corrupted Citizens trolling group, to die, along with the rest of the forums, so he could live out his life in peace. Oh, he inferred okay. that he was in fact Chris himself, though other commenters did not publicly acknowledge this fact. Two days later, in the move to seemingly get the best of the trolls, he posted a link to an image album on the site Imager, consisting of most of his past Facebook posts, many of which were private and shared only with a select few friends. Whether this was truly Chris's act or someone who hacked into his Facebook is uncertain. On May 30th, Christian complained on Facebook about his mother being displeased with him playing video games like Resident Evil in front of her. My mother has been really getting on my nerves. I really need my girlfriend so that I can get away from here now and then. And I cannot even go downtown now because it wastes so much gas and gas is so costly. And to make guys on my mother's concern for gas cost, that is one reason why I have been on my sabbatical. Yeah, he's, he's bitching now, but bro. Get, or he's bitching then, but fucking gas now. Woo-ee. All I gotta say, brother. Fucking crazy. ...from my church. 
I have had more freedom when my father was alive, and I end up losing it when he passed away, because now I got to serve my mother and protect Good her stuff, and everything. Brother. And I can blame Good that stuff. son of a bitch, Michael Snyder, for taking and wasting the money that my mom and I had soon gotten from my father's passing, because he had to go send us to court for all the goddamn shit of his. Michael well, Snyder- you could have just not hit him with a car. That's just a little personal advice. Um, you could have just not hit him with a car, brother. That's just my personal advice to you, bro. Just don't hit him with a fucking car and you would have been fucking fine. Snyder is a bastard to me and my mother for taking us to court. He essentially stole a lot of money from us indirectly. In early June, Christian began playing the PS Vita game, Tor's Friend Network, which was connected to his Facebook account and frequently automatically posted updates about his activities on his profile. On June 22nd, after Bro, finding out that he... Those shits are so fucking annoying. I know exactly what they're, what they're talking about. They're always like, do you want to post on Facebook? Why the fuck would I want people to know I'm playing some kind of cringe-ass game on Facebook? Like, that just seems like the weirdest thing in the world to, to want to announce, but... He and his mother were not invited to his half-brother Cole Smithy's wedding three months prior. Christian oh, no. recorded the video, targeted at the musician who performed at the wedding, John Kyle, who was also Cole's stepbrother. So, I'm assuming that it's the on the dad's family. That's why they weren't invited. Um, I mean, it kind of does make sense. Sometimes family bonds do, like, develop through there a little bit, but... Um... Hello, John Kyle. This is Christian Weston Chandler, Joseph Cole Smithy's half-brother. We share the same mother, Barbara Ann Weston Chandler. I understand that uh, you have performed recently at his wedding a few months ago. I have just learned this. Yeah, so he finally got married. whoop we do for him. Oh, and thank him for the invitation that we never received. We would have RSVP'd sooner and actually come to the wedding had he actually invited me and our mother. Okay. Anyway, I am sending you this video response because I wish to inquire about his uh, current address so that my mother and I can at least be able to write to him personally. Because Maybe you should just messaged him, you know, privately or on Facebook or something, Chris, instead of making a video about it. She does miss him very much. Because it's like a little weird that you're making this video. That could potentially lead to this guy getting like somewhat doxxed. Okay. Much. I tried time and again to get him to contact him and get in touch with him. And my mother talked to him. He never responds. No. Oh. Never responds. He should love his mother. She misses him. Nearly 72 years old. She does not need to be treated like a piece of dirt. She is a lot better than that. Regardless of what anybody has lied to Cole about. Everything he heard from anybody outside the house, even Jerry, his father-in-law, or Jack, I think was the name of his real father. We're getting, we're getting some real, we're getting some real lore here. We're getting some real family lore here. Holy shit! They all lie to him about what, how about the kind of person Barbara Ann is and was. So at least have the comic decency to re to reply to us, brother. It's been. Like what? Over a decade since the last, the final ever family reunion in Red Oak? Everybody hates us there now since Karina died! <sighs> anyway, uh, if you know his address, John, please refer to- It seems like the mom- like, I don't know. So people have told me that like the mom is much worse than this video represents. And I don't know if that's true. I remember seeing something that was a little suspicious. I mean, obviously- uh, leaning into the idea that, you know, you should go hit somebody with a car, probably not the greatest advice. If that is true, though, it, it creates, like, this really interesting dynamic here between Chris and Barbara and, like, the rest of the world where, like, Chris is already isolated because he's getting trolled so badly, but then also Barbara's isolated because, like, she might be abusive um, and nobody wants to interact with her. And that creates, like, these are the only two people left for each other. Kind of, like, really fucked up, like, gross thing. There's just so much fucked up shit when it comes up to the, the, this, this conversation, man. So much. To make, related to me, and you may share this video with Cole as well next time you talk to him. Thank you, and have a good day. Uh, At a later date, too. John Kyle was made aware of this video and left a comment. He stated that he was sickened by Chris equally as much as the community surrounding him, and that Cole had never even mentioned Christian to him. Two days later, Mary McLaren, Anna's mother, metaphorically sent Chris good energy via Facebook and asked him to enjoy each day by finding joy in the small simple things that give him pleasure. Okay. He left a comment on her post. 
Whoopee. That'll bring pretty, single, well-organized women around to make the first move on me. Maybe. Open parentheses, colon, zero. On July 7th, he shared via Twitter and Facebook that he liked the movie My Little Pony Equestria Girls on YouTube, oh, okay. despite his initial staunch criticism. A month later, Chris Great. went to Facebook to praise the high school Lego set and said it should win an award for best toy. On August 6th, okay. Chris posted a photo of the newspaper onto which one of his dogs had recently urinated. He felt that the resulting puddle bore the image of a girl. The next day, one of Chris's Facebook friends, William Elliot Waterman, made a lengthy post on the social media platform addressing the trolls. After finding out that his comments on Chris's posts were also being archived onto the wiki forums, he lashed out at the trolls, okay. expressing that he felt that they were no better than Chris, and despite having a job, neither was he. He angrily pleaded for them to stop bullying him and treat him like a human being. Sometime in early August, Christian began tracking down as many people as he could from his Manchester High School class of 2000 on Facebook and sent them friend requests. After they connected on Facebook, Chris sent them on. Uh, isn't that like the horror, though, of horror of Facebook? Is like, you know, you get out of high school and all those people that you maybe didn't want to associate with, you don't have to deal with them anymore. Where you'd like walk around every day on like thin ice being like, oh man, I hope I don't have to see so and so today. And then all of a sudden, Facebook pops around, and they add you, and you're like, fuck, I gotta add them back, you know? Known gifts, for which they thanked him by a post on the social media site. He apparently had trouble finding Tiffany Gowan, one of his closest gal pals, so he asked on the Quickie forums through his Painting a Tree account about her whereabouts. He failed to gather any useful information. From August 15th, he started uploading seemingly random pictures on Twitter and Facebook. On the 17th, he revealed in a graphic that each of those images was linked to one another in some way, and asked if his readers could solve the riddle and determine the missing picture in the sequence. After getting annoyed by the lack of people trying to contribute an answer, Christian went to the Quickie Forms <laughs> under his painting a tree alias, irritated by the troll's silence regarding his riddle. He explained how a couple of the other images related to each other, and encouraged them to try solve it. He deleted the riddle two days later, and returned to the forums to give one more clue for the riddle, which involved a photo in which Chris wore a hat, with Brandon promoting the Pittsburgh Pirates baseball team. He expressed his infuriation at the troll's stupidity, and questioned why he still- I saw that- I've seen- I saw that before, I just didn't understand it because it was dumb. Interesting though, but- them. On August 20th- yeah, Chris invented possibly... the Zodiac Killer? Yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, if, if anything, maybe Barbara invented the Zodiac Killer, because Chris is the Zodiac Killer. Just kidding, but... With yeah, the help of another party, Chris started a page on Facebook called Braziers for Males. His aim was to encourage and normalize the concept of men wearing bras, giving multiple use- <laughs> <laughs> Oh, guys, you, you heard it. There's another first. Chris is the first meninist advocating for male rights and body positivity. He's really ahead of his time, if you think about it, because men would be like, yeah, you know what? We should be able to fundamentally body positivity movement for males. But. Cases, such as to prevent chafing, offer support and relief, flatten the wearer's chest if they develop enlarged breast tissue, or even to express their sexual identity. The profile photo of the page was one that was snapped by a troll, and originally depicted Chris out in public wearing a sports bra, onto which WANT WOMAN was written. Mm. However, the iteration on Facebook was altered to remove the text on his bra. On the 23rd, he oh. uploaded a photo album onto the page. I guess they made a good picture. Um. Page, showing a collection of male breasts. He later on updated another album, wherein he edited all of the photos with what was likely Microsoft Paint to make it seem like the men were all wearing bras. Wow, that also looks like a really comfortable Christian bra. shared a post on the Breast Cancer Awareness Facebook page and revealed that his mother, Barbara, was a breast cancer survivor. He soon okay. after uploaded a photo of his mother with her dog, Snoopy. The following day, okay. Christian started a discussion on the Quickie Forums titled, Christian Weston Chandler is straight! You goddamn pinheads! I, I disagree. I have already told you. Chris has told you. The riddle... Wait, so like, what is the, what's the motivation for this? Was anybody calling him gay? Or is this just like kind of random? Because it feels like this is just kind of like, is he just like, is he just making outrage posts just because he's bored? This answer was the fucking Pittsburgh Pirates. Christian is not a goddamn homo. Christian is straight. He gets hard over women. He vomits. What is the answer? The riddle was the Pittsburgh Pirates. By the way, I'm straight. What the fuck? What? Males, get it through your goddamn demented thick skulls, you goddamn pinheads! I should know very well, because I am Christian Weston Chandler of Rutgersville, Virginia, himself. You know what I will say, though? Is that, like, people who tend to have a lot of female friends tend to be either girls or gay dudes. It's true. You know it's true. Just saying. You goddamn males make me vomit. Sick and shit. On September 1st, Christian shared his custom-made online flyer for a supposed reunion of his high school class due to take place in 2015, and asked if anyone could help him track down his gal pals, Tiffany Gowan and Miranda Mitchell. The next day, he reported that he got into an altercation with a so-called female manager at Walmart. Manager. He shared her name and email address, and requested his followers to let her personally know that no one should bother autistic people who are currently depressed, in a foul mood, and hate the Xbox line of game consoles. His friend, William Waterman, tried to reason with him, and advised him against sharing people's email addresses on a public forum like Facebook. 
Chris in return reinforced the story that the event happened because he was in a bad mood and that the female security officer spoke harshly to him. He confessed that his actions were immature, dumb, and irrational, but he had mental problems. He further elaborated that he was in his present condition because now of the that's you that the, the last episode we talked about that, that's like using the autism card like it's one thing to be like yeah I was having a bad day and I'm an irresponsible mistake but like being like well I have autism that's kind of like a that's kind of like playing the card there you know what I mean like I understand you get to struggle with interactions but I don't know that's what it feels like to me maybe I'm being stupid but actions of past Manadurks and Megan Schroeder and demanded that she return his Sailor Moon DVDs that she allegedly had conned bro I feel so bad for Megan his rant I don't to do with any of this Rob Bell a major wuss and complained about the thousands of dollars that he and his mother had to pay him. Not long after, he reposted his original Facebook post on the Quickie forums under his painting a tree alias, once again seemingly pretending that he was not Chris at all. Yeah, that's like his uh, Blue Eyes White Dragon card that he plays there. It's like in the, in the popular show, Yu-Gi-Oh. He encouraged the trolls to harass the security officer. A day later, he wrote what he called Quick's Hallmark Negative Life Events, which was a chronological list of events and people in his life that negatively affected him. These included his childhood babysitter, Roach, the elementary school principal who attempted to molest him, his high school graduation, Michael Snyder. Wait, what? Hold on. Sitter, Roach, the elementary school principal who attempted to molest him, his high school graduation. Wait, what are you talking about? What? 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 I missed something. Is he referring to like the teacher that was like mean to him and he thought he was a gay predator or something? Who the fuck is he talking about? What? His what? Which included his childhood babysitter, Roach, the elementary school principal who attempted to molest him. Ooh. There, was this the thing that we missed? Did I miss this? There was an actual elementary school teacher trying to molest him? What the fuck? His high school graduation, Michael Snyder, Megan, and the online trolls. Two days later, Chris had his final court date in relation to his crimes against Snyder nearly two years prior. There was the All principal who made him sit on his lap. I, yeah, I can't recall anything. Is that real? Wow, what the fuck? Okay. Felonies were reduced to misdemeanors. She received a two-month suspended jail sentence, was requested to be on good behavior, and stay away from the game place. Oh, on yeah. September 6th, Chris angrily took to Facebook to declare that he had been banned from his nearest Walmart because of his actions on the 2nd. When asked by his friends as to the reasons why, Chris wrote that they banned him for drawing on in permanent marker an H and E in front of an Xbox display in the store, making the sign read, Xbox, oh, okay. despite his followers trying to reason with him and tell him why it was a justifiable punishment for defacing the sign, he still could not come to terms with it. The next day, he announced another encounter with law enforcement. He's just like, no, you don't understand, it is a Hexbox. Is that like his whole argument? What the fuck? How good are 204 druids? So, um, the 204 druids, the, every 204 druid increases, or any, well, you wouldn't really get 204 druids. A lot of people go 014 druids, and then they'll go like a 015 druid. So basically, every one of these druids increases every druid's like attack speed uh, in range, and it attacks up to five times, but it doesn't impact itself, so you need six of them. And then I'm going for like one of them to be, um, I'm going for like, it's probably 205. Druid. I like to go 2 0 because I feel like when you go into this path, Heart of Oak doesn't do shit. So I'm better. I like going this path, but you know, that's that's how good they are. Once I'm able to upgrade it, it gets really good. It's completely unnecessary for this game because you can pretty much clear this if I just got like a like a 302 or a 320 um super monkey or two of them. But like I just feel like using the strat. And it works better with the druid because the, or with Oberon uh Oban Greenfoot because he buffs them. So God is giving me the middle finger yet again. I backed up and scratched a car in El Agave lot, and she's a damn smoker. Now the damn jerk up is giving me a hard time because I'm screaming up at freaking Emmanuel God. I want God to just kill me now if he is going to keep giving me middle fingers and a damned difficult God. life. After this event, Christian decided that police were not allowed to be in Quickville, Virginia, and oh. that law within the town Whoa! could be solely by the psychic Pokemon team led by Magichan. Chris Chan created Defund the Police. It's true. All right, abolish the police. Abol I think my favorite tower in the game is like a, is actually a um, probably like a one five zero druid because it's actually the hard thorns makes the druid pop um, leads. But that's not for this. Uh, <laughs> that's not for on September tenth. He shared his brassieres for males page on his personal profile. Later that day, he wrote a post. This made about a decreasing friends count on Facebook and pleaded for his friends to not leave him. He regarded all members of his high school class part of his family and desperately wished oh for all of them God. to come together for the reunion. On September Damn. 11th, he posted a Wait, photo on the so were people... Oh, dude, this is so sad. So he's adding people from his high school and they were like unfriending him because he was going fucking insane? That's probably exactly what was happening. That's... I mean, that's just sad for Chris. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, I wonder if trolls were leaving because they were bored of him too. Mentioned Brazier's for Mail's page, which showed that he became offended by witnessing the DVD cover for the film Magic Mike and had drawn on bras on all the oh shirtless actors on the cover. 
He soon after uploaded a photo gallery of men wearing bras. Also on that day, a troll who went by the name Martin Wilson posted a video on the page, allegedly thankful for Chris bringing awareness to the subject and speaking in a manner not unlike Christian. So this is what I wore before he told me to go to Walmart. I used to go with a white tee, and you see the duct tape, the tape, the tape in the background? Yeah, I used to, you know, cover my nip nippy slips, you know, nip nippy slips. So yeah, this is just thank you to Christian Weston Chandler, the founder. Is this guy real, or is this guy tro trolling? Serious question. The founder of this page. Wait, this and, guy um, might be real. Is this the guy that who was like really like who's really genuine like Chris, but Chris thought it was a troll and treated him like shit? Fuck. This movement, I feel like this will go really far, and maybe we need to take this to President Obama and Michelle Obama. They seem like sensible folks who will help us realize our goal. So thank you, group. I feel very welcome. On the 17th, Chris discovered a DVD of the cartoon series Sonic Underground, which he spotted on the grass in his front yard. He supposed it was a gift for him from either a fan or a troll, and had been lying on the ground for quite some time, since the front oh, cover had gotten okay. warped and wrinkled from being out in the rain. He then went to Facebook to demonstrate how to and how not to bring him presents, with the help of some demonstrationary imagery. Okay. On September 24th, he showed off three LEGO characters meant to represent Megan Schroeder, Mary Lee Walsh, and Michael Snyder, all upside down and contained inside another transparent LEGO piece. Wow. He confessed that when he felt especially angry, he would shake the vial, treating the figures like voodoo dolls, taking out his anger on the people he believed had wronged him. Okay. He further explained that during his friendship with Megan, she often requested that he buy items from eBay for her and apparently did not reimburse him with cash, but instead merchandise from her own collection, such as anime, manga, DVDs, figurines, and a mix bag of LEGOs. Interesting. On October 3rd, Chris received an email from one Rebecca Bentley, a troll who posed as one of his Manchester High School classmates. She expressed her disapproval of his constant negative comments against Megan, highlighting that their interactions happened a long time ago, and that possibly she could have changed as a person since then. She wanted him to admit that he played a part in the downfall of their friendship, and that he could channel all the hateful energy he had against her into something more productive that could make him happy. Throughout early October, he continued to make <laughs> hateful Facebook. Someone says, I hope that's all he does with those figures and those vials. For sure, brother. For fucking sure, man. Book posts against Megan, claiming that he would only forgive her if she apologized. What if Megan was actually a piece of shit? It's totally possible. It's totally possible. I mean, you're saying because of what that what uh, was just said, right? Like she would wouldn't pay him back. She'd pay him back in like whatever bullshit. That's like I feel like it's like normal. Like, oh, can you buy this for me? I'll give you like my fucking manga, my hentai anime. You know. As to him face to face, gave him back his Sailor Moon DVDs, and when all the negative words against him on the internet are gone forever. Well, that's impossible to happen. On the fifth, first, so. he allegedly received an email response from Megan, though it was like. Do you think somebody told him that Megan was the cause of all the problems? That like a, tr a troll? Do you think that like, dude? Because would you? There's probably trolls that never seeps to the light. They like they're trolling Chris, but in the background, you know. Oh, his dad said that. Yeah, true. That's fair. Maybe the dad. Maybe that's what happened. The dad is the ultimate troll. Holy shit. To have been penned by an impersonating troll. I didn't conspire to destroy your life. You did that enough on your own, with your ridiculous webcomic and your war against E.D. As for the touching thing, I don't like being touched by men who aren't in a relationship with me. And all those things you did for me, I thought you did that because we were friends, and I was grateful. Do you know how much of your crap I put up with? The touching, the rants, the being creepy, all that. I never set up that E.D. page. It wasn't me who told- And I didn't fake romance, that was real. Wait, what? Christopher wasn't gay, and how did that send you into mental shock? Did you believe it was yours or something? You were already in a phenomenon. Oh, wow. Told Mims and Lucas to do You already in a phenomenon long before I came into the picture. Stuff. I didn't get you banned from the store, and I sure as hell am not responsible for the death of your father. Do you know how bad that picture made me feel? It scared the hell out of me. You are the one who should apologize. Didn't you consider me a sweetheart? Well, for all your other sweethearts, you made those stupid videos. So if I still mean so damn much to you, why don't you make a video apologizing to me? And maybe, just maybe, I'll consider emailing Lucas and telling him to take some stuff down. Wait a minute, though. I was like, oh, I was on her side until the last part. I'll consider emailing Lucas and telling him to take some stuff down. Interest. That's just interesting to me. So either, either this is really Megan and she's connected to the trolls... Or, that's a troll pretending to be Megan. Okay. On that same day, Christian posted 28 photos on Facebook, seemingly depicting a narrative in which the Lego incarnations of Chris and Megan fight each other, and Chris ultimately defeats her. Wow. Without much interaction from other real-life people, Christian's imagination took over, fueling his unquenchable rage for the people who he saw as his enemies. Even when his friends tried to convince him otherwise, he refused to let go of the idea that he was a widely persecuted figure, hungry for revenge. 
so he sought comfort in the things that could not disagree with his thoughts, those that could help him realize his visions of vengeance, the games and toys around him. Damn. Deep ass shit, bro. Fuck. What an episode. It's starting to really spice up. That was 2013. <laughs> okay. Incredible. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And another special shout out to all my Patreon and Twitch subs. If you'd like to support this channel further than you already have by just watching the video alone, go down to the links below where you can sub on my Patreon, which will allow you to get your name on this beautiful black wall. <laughs> uh, or you can go to the Twitch page and you can actually use a free Amazon Prime sub, if you have Amazon Prime, to subscribe. Thank you very much, guys. Take care.